all right so watch my right hand so it's not perfect or anything like that uh, but i want to talk about my right hand and some of the things that i do to um, be able to play the way i play so it's not you know um, rocket science i'm not a classically trained guitarist i've watched a lot of classical guitarists play um, i do have a, a good friend of mine or you say my best friend is a classical guitarist uh, but uh, just watch my right hand a little bit and i'll talk about it um, so it's a little bit of a butcher of a classical guitar style but i'll just play a couple of things Some of the things that I kind of like to do is I want to try to get as much finger independence per string as possible. Uh, that comes over time and I don't have it mastered. So I'm not a classical guitarist. I keep saying that and, and I'm not. But, um, um, you know, from watching the fingers of a classical guitarist and their technique, as well as a bass player. So I just recently saw the video that Rick Beato did with Matteo Mancuso. It's not rocket science. The guy is extremely talented, more talent than I'll ever have. I mean, and, but people are fascinated by this right hand that he has. The reality of it is it's not a unique right hand. In fact, he doesn't even have the best right hand. He might have the best right hand maybe for a guy playing, um, you know, um, um, fusion, um, metal, whatever you want to call the stuff that he plays. But if you watch some classical guitarists play, um, just Google Paganini Caprice 24 and you'll see there's no distortion. There's nothing helping people playing like warp speed and there's no tapping, no nothing like that with that. So that style can be done. And all he's doing is he's applying that style to the electric guitar with that finger in, in, in independence. And I shouldn't say all he's doing because it's very, very technical. And I mean, he can play eruption with that stuff. But there are things that we can do, baby steps that we can take to help us if it's a style that you want to learn. So it's not rocket science. Always remember this, right? Somebody might have much more natural talent than you, but that shouldn't preclude you from trying it out and then incorporating some of those elements into your playing, period. You're not going to be Mateo. I'm not going to be Mateo. Nor are we going to be Julian Bream or Jocko. And believe it or not, I always said this, that right hand technique is a fusion of classical and um, jazz bass playing, uh, specifically um, jazz bassists like Jocko who played fingerstyle funk. So it's a combination of a lot of usage of I am, uh, which is really what you're doing when you're playing bass. I play a lot of bass and, right? So it's like, I am, I am, I am. And the traditional classical technique. I mean, where Mateo differs is that he goes back and forth with some of this stuff that's like crazy. So the guy's got some crazy skills. But there's some things like you could do. So for example, for me, some of the exercises that I practice is, um, if you look at my right hand, this is just chromatic, so it's not really about my left, but I'm going to use my left. I'm starting on the F here, so it's going to be F, F sharp, G, um, G sharp, A, A, A flat. So, and the same thing. So, and if you notice here, it's I am, 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 I am. Okay. So there's no P in that. It's just I am, I am, I am, like a typical bass player. Now, the only thing I'm doing differently a little bit here is it's a, um, a free stroke. It's not a red stroke. And all that means is that I'm not resting um, I, I, on another string after I hit the note, which would be, if you know this, this, I'm hitting this B flat and sliding over. That's a rest stroke. So most of my thing as opposed to this. 
that's it without getting too technical. So that's one thing that I do a lot um, as far as that's concerned. And I think that's more of a bass player thing than it is even a classical guitar technique, whatever you want to call it. I don't really care what you call it, but it's just a technique. Okay. The other one that I do is the P I M A. So remember, I did this. I am. I am. I am. I am. This time around, I'm going to do P I M P I M P I M. So, and P stands for thumb, thumb index middle. So. Again, P I M P so P I So and that's really a lot of what I use is just I M and P I M. Now I will use um the A, but I use a lot of the A which is um, um index middle and ring finger. Um I'll use the ring a lot of times just with chordal ar arpeggios. And so, for example, if I took a minor seven flat of fifth, starting with the A right here. And so in this case, all I'm doing is, and all an arpeggio is each of the, the notes are played individually. So, so P, I, M, A, B, I, M, A, B, I. And all I'm doing is taking it down chromatically, starting with the A, A note here. So A minor seven flat of fifth. come back up so you've got that once in a blue moon and this guy is a little bit wacky so i'm i'm citing all these people pasquale the grasso so i don't have a pick right in front of me but um nearby but he'll use this pinky thing that's your weakest finger so he'll play with a pick and literally will... Hold on one second. Let me find a pick. Uh, all right. Here we go. So this technique is nuts. And I've tried to practice it. So instead of using a thumb pick or anything like that, he basically has a pick here. And he's using um, index middle... Um, no, not index. This is index. So the index is holding this. He's using the middle ring and pinky. So you've got him doing things like this. Notice the weakness. This is your weakest finger. So it's almost like a dead finger, but you can practice things long. If you practice something long enough, you'll get a technique of it down. Okay. So he's another monster. We're not going to play like any of these guys, but we can watch how they play learn a little bit of that technique and use it. So anyway, just some things that I do. Uh, sorry for the long, um, I wouldn't even call this thing lesson. I call it an exploration. So if you wanna know how to do this kind of stuff, go to the source, get yourself a classical guitar teacher, um, learn some of it, but know how to rock out or how to play jazz and then fuse the two together. It'll really help your playing um, and it'll help take it to another direction. I love a pick and I love my fingers as well just different ways and different styles and stuff. So these guys are monsters. These people like uh, uh, Pasquale de Grasso and, um, you know, obviously Matteo Mancuso and things like that. So we can inspire and we can actually achieve a little bit of what they have and infuse it into our own playing. All right, then. Thank you for watching. Practice, practice, and practice some more.